you can see with this, uh, I think this is a uh, hawthorn tree that was clipped into a ball, and you can see those water sprouts regrowing. That's only a couple of years worth, and it's an immense amount of work. The other way to keep this tree is not to prune it much at all and uh, just learn to love it the way it is, which is a bit extra twiggy, but that's just how they are. Better that than this, uh, because I'm sure this person has the bloody forearms to prove that they are losing the battle. This is a deodar cedar that has been over thinned. The thing about conifers is they don't generally have the same capacity to water sprout back. They can't send up, you know, a forest of these shoots, uh, especially when it's been thinned. It will look like this for many years. And if you think like a plant, you realize that this tree is on a starvation diet. It needs a certain number of needles just to manufacture food from sunshine. And if you strip it out and it doesn't have the capacity to water sprout back, it is now working through its reserves of carbohydrate, which it stores just under the bark, kind of like we do, to carry on the business of life. And if you overthin or perhaps just over prune your trees year after year, uh, your tree could be on death's door and it just takes one more stress, uh, a drought or a bug infestation, and you have a dead tree. So the race is on. Will this tree put on enough needles before it runs out of its carbohydrate reserves? This poor little tree has been headed and stripped, which means all the internal branches were taken out. Removal cuts, which this tree has suffered from too many of, Removal cuts are better for your tree, but you can go overboard with too much of a good thing. And if you do, you can get this upsurge of water sprouts, which just look like a nightmare. My husband calls this the fright. He says, that tree's going to have a bad case of the fright next year. And uh, these are bad news indeed. You take them off, you get more. You take those off, you get more and more. You take those off, you get more and more and more. So the trick to pruning is to learn how much you can take off before your tree goes into a spasm of water sprout regrowth. This is one we call an Innis Arden palm tree. It's actually a dug fir, and uh, it has been had too many of its lower branches taken up. That's called, uh, it's okay to take off about a third, but in this case, two-thirds or more has been removed. And it's not a very safe situation. As you can imagine, this might fall over. Uh, it was done for a view. A lot of tree abuse done for views. Would be better to take this tree out than to prune it this much. And uh, this is called lion's tailing. And it is also bad. Too many of the internal branches have been pruned off. Notice that this is beautiful. Uh, the test of good pruning is not do I like how it looks, the test is, is the long-term health and beauty maintained or improved? Had this tree lived, and it didn't, it would have sent up a billion water sprouts internally. It didn't help that they tried to build a house around it and uh, killed all the roots, too. These are cases where people love their trees to death. And it's called lion's tailing because it looks like a lion's tail. It's stripped out to the end. The trick to pruning is you take some, you leave some, you take some, and you leave some all along the branch. You don't strip it out to the ends. You don't cut off all the tips. You take some and leave some using mainly removal cuts and thin the tree out, and we will eventually see some pictures of that. But we need to finish off all the bad things to review. You do not want to top your tree. You do not want to head or tip your tree, and you do not want to overskirt it. That means taking off lower limbs. You don't want to do too much, and you don't want to lion's tail. There'll be a pop quiz, so be sure you have all these uh, in your mind ready to go. And just remember, the signs of malpruning are dieback or stubs, the creation of water sprouts, or if you find yourself pruning more and more and more on your trees. I should mention that this slideshow does not pertain to fruit trees. Fruit trees, you do a lot of crazy stuff too, including trying to 
take them down, thinning them out, shortening them. And that's really only for the apples, the pears, and the peaches. Uh, the plums, you do two different ways, and the cherries, you don't hardly touch at all. So uh, fruit tree pruning is very complex, self-contradictory, and I'm not going to include it here because it would confuse you even more. So uh, you want to look for a different slideshow called Fruit Tree Pruning if you want to learn how to prune fruit trees. But let's start at the beginning, which is how to prune a tree limb. It's okay to take off limbs, but you need to know how to do it the correct way. There are only three kinds of cuts for your tree branch. Two of them are wrong. One of them's right. You don't want to make a stub cut. You don't want to make a flush cut. You do want to make a collar cut. In other words, you don't want to cut too far, too close, but just right. So here's an illustration of the three kinds of cuts. The one on the left is a stub cut. It, you cut too far away, the branch will die back to the branch collar, which is a naturally occurring bulge at the base of most branches. Uh, you'll see a little rumple of wood, looks like a tiny mountain range on the top, and then you'll see a bulge on the bottom where the branch meets up with the trunk. And you don't want to cut into either of those. The middle one cuts off the collar by making a flush cut, which is what all the old books used to say is make a nice, tidy flush cut. No, 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 no. You want to make a correct collar cut, the one on the right, and that is outside the branch bark ridge. That's the little rumple of woods that you'll be able to see. You can actually stop this slideshow and go outside and find some branch bark ridges they're especially easy to see on birches, but you'll be able to find them on most, most trees. And you'll be able to see that collar because all of a sudden things get a little plumper at the base of your tree branch. So you want to cut to the collar. Arborists spend a lot of time in agony trying to figure out exactly where the collar is. So here are those three cuts again. The one on the left is a stub cut. And below it, you'll see how much rot gets into the tree. The rot races into the heart of the tree, and that's not good. That dead stub just hangs on your tree and acts like a big stick of sugar, attracting the organisms that want to eat up your tree. The middle cut is a correct collar cut. And if you make a correct collar cut, the rot that enters your tree will be confined to the branch, and it will not spread to the rest of the tree. And the one on the right is the worst. It is a flush cut. That's when people cut off the bottom of the collar. The collar is actually has wood that belongs to the trunk, not the branch. I know this is going to be hard for you to get, but here we go. The branch wood is different than the trunk wood. The branch is not actually attached to the tree. It's just laminated in place. In the spring, your branch wakes up and puts on a ring of wood. Then your trunk wakes up and it puts on a ring of wood. And where it meets up with the branch, it kind of laminates it in place. That's what the collar is. The branch is the knot hole that falls out of a piece of lumber. And the trick to pruning is to just cut the branch and not open up the trunk to rot. That illustration on the right shows a flush cut. And if you look below, you can see where the rot is headed up and down the trunk. And that's not good. You don't want a tree that's full of rotten cavities and rotten columns of wood because that takes it closer to death. And trees are long-term commitments. They're in the same category as bridges and roofs. We want our trees to live long and prosper. So we do what's called natural target pruning. We try to find the collar, and we target cutting it off right there. Uh, this is a picture of the actual inside of a tree. 
Thank you, Dr. Shigo. He was the very famous scientist that found out all kinds of interesting things by scientifically testing them. He found out that tree pruning paint doesn't work. He found out that flush cuts do great damage to trees. Uh, And he found out exactly why topping is the worst thing you can do to a tree and causes it to rot out something terrible. But back to your proper collar cut. You don't want to cut too far out. See the line that says no? That's too far out. You don't want to cut flush. See the dotted line? That's also a no. That would be a flush cut. No, 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 no. You want to just take off the branch where it says yes. And the only part that will rot out will be that triangle, which is where the branch disappears into the tree. And the tree naturally seals off the rot and outgrows it. Usually, you can see the collar. It really pretty much says prune here. It's almost a dotted line. The important thing is to cut from the bottom up. Always make an undercut so that you don't rip off the down the collar. But sometimes you can't see the collar. It isn't a nice handy little bulge. And therefore, you have to use geometry. You know, I was an algebra person, but I guess I can figure out this geometry. Your trunk is, let's call it a pup tent. And it's the tent stake that holds up the pup tent. And the angle between the branch bark ridge, which you will always be able to see, and the pup tent pole is angle A. And you're going to cut angle B, which will be equal to angle A. Make a pup tent. Make an equilateral triangle out of your branch and your trunk and cut to that. So I'll give you a minute to stare at this. Okay. Now you know where to cut. The mistake most people make is they start cutting from the top And they go down, and because the angle is narrow, they wind up inadvertently cutting off the bottom of the collar, and that's very bad. You get the flush cut. The other thing that can happen is you get halfway through, and then the branch rips down the trunk. Also, you know, very bad and embarrassing if you're with other arborists if this happens. So to avoid these two problems, you cut from the bottom up, which is very awkward And you spend a fair amount of time making sure that you have the correct angle and you aren't leaving a stub and you aren't cutting into the collar. If you have a wide-angled branch attachment, we used to call them branch crotches, but then the politically correct people got to arboric culture. So now we call them branch attachments. And if you have a nice broad angle, you take the weight off your branch first by cuts one and two. It'll just fold down gently onto the ground instead of falling off on your kneecap. And uh, then you make your final cut. If it is a narrow angle, like the tree on the right, you're going to want to make the entire cut from the bottom up, not just a brief undercut. If you're new, sometimes works good to take out a felt tip pen and Mark where you're going to make your cut because it looks right on one side and then you walk over the other side, you realize you've left a a bit of a stub. It should be smooth. There should be no sharp edges. And it tends to be a cut in a circle. Not always, but not so much with the oval. So here's a picture of somebody who has done a flush cut on the left. And it will not callus over evenly. After you make your cut, the tree starts to callus over the wound. And if you're doing things just right, next year that callus will be a perfect circle instead of an oval like this. And then the one on the right, somebody flush cut too much on the top. And notice it's a horseshoe. It should be a perfect circle if you're doing everything right. Just uh, you can practice at home. Uh, You don't need to get too worried about this when you consider that most people are topping, tipping, stripping, and shearing their trees and doing immense damage. If you don't quite get the collar cut right the first couple of times, it's no big deal. You just do the best you can. And uh, just to reiterate, there is no set angle. The angle varies on the kind of the tree. (laughs) 
Just to keep it difficult enough for you, sometimes the colors are huge and obvious, like that one on the upper left. Uh, sometimes there is no visible collar, like the one on the right. And sometimes there is no collar at all, in which case you make a pretty vicious-looking cut on the bottom. After a while, you kind of get a sense for it. And now we are in deep, deep arbor culture. This is everything you ever wanted to know about trees in two hours, probably way more than you wanted to know. But here goes. The collar cut on the right is your average good collar cut. You can see the branch bark ridge. Imagine the pup tent, getting the angle correctly and, and cut on line three. But if your branch has been standing dead on your tree for like five years, the collar has actually snuck out and is trying to cover it over, except there is no empty place. So you actually cut to the collar, but not into it. It looks like you're leaving a stub, but you aren't. You're cutting to the collar, which has inched its way out in a feeble attempt to seal off the wound. Once you take the branch off, it will, in fact, seal off the wound. And I want to plug the book by Edward Gilman called An Illustrated Guide to Pruning. If you want to learn more, 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 more about training trees and pruning trees, uh, you would be hard-pressed to do better than Ed Gilman's book. It's got many of these illustrations in it, and it is just chock-block full of illustrations and good guides on pruning. And if you are, in fact, a tree nut and can't get enough learning about trees, and you've heard of Dr. Shigo and all his great work, which, you know, he's really the Sir Isaac Newton of trees. I was lucky enough to have met Shigo many times. I was actually hugged by Shigo. And he did a lot of groundbreaking work about compartmentalization of decay in trees, the CODIT model. But from time to time, he could be a little difficult to understand. And thankfully, Richard Murray has written a book that explains a lot of the very technical aspects of pruning and other things about trees. So if you can't get enough about the biology and the science of trees, you could do no better than to get Richard Murray's book. Of course, you know, if you just want to learn a little bit about trees, you should get my book. Cass Turnbull's Guide to Perning has probably enough to get by with. Uh, shameless plug. I, I just thought I'd mention it while we're talking about it. Here we have the three types of good tree pruning. We talked about the bad tree pruning. Now we're going to talk about the good tree pruning. And uh, they are thinning. Crown raising, also called skirting or limbing up, and windowing. And here are some illustrations of that. Thinning, every space is filled but with less stuff. You take out uh, dead wood, crossing rubbing branches, and just some of the branches, generally speaking, to create a lighter looking tree that uh, people will enjoy more as part of their view. And also, taking out the dead wood does improve the health. Skirting, or crown raising, is taking off the lower limbs. Here again, at any given time in the life of your tree, two-thirds should be in canopy and one-third bare trunk. The lower limbs of the tree feed the lower part of the trunk and make it uh, fat and strong. And then if you have a tree that's really close to your window, sometimes you can do something called windowing, also sometimes called layering, sometimes called interlimbing, where you take out a limb every so often and maybe you get a peekaboo view of the mountains or a little bit more daylight into your bedroom. One form of pruning is called used to be called the safety prune. Now it's called crown cleaning. And that's pretty much taking out the dead wood and it's really the only thing that trees uh, would like you to do. And there's even a little bit of controversy now 
about whether it's always a good idea to take out dead wood. There's some trees that collect large amounts of dead wood, and there is a fear that if you take it out, you get more wind into the crown and cause more breakage. Currently, the research is not very clear as to whether pruning makes a tree safer, more dangerous, or is neutral with regards to trees and windstorms. But we do know that deadwood is kind of a drag on the health of trees. So uh, if you're not doing any structural damage, and you probably aren't, it's always a good idea to start with the deadwood. In fact, 90% of pruning is taking out deadwood, old hanging branches, dead branches that died because they were broken or because they got frozen off or shaded out. And this also makes trees and shrubs look great. People are always impressed by the tremendous difference that deadwooding makes. And uh, Dr. Alex Shigo called removing deadwood a health care treatment. I think of deadwood as kind of like garbage. And in your tree or shrub, you may have 30 years worth of collected garbage. And now it's time to take out the garbage. Garbage doesn't actually cause disease, but it is an unhealthy condition and everybody's going to feel a lot better when it's gone.